Now I got a request recently from Alex Rosado. He's a fairly new tire, but he works at an Orva shop, so he's, he's working on picking up his tying skills. He asked me if I had any tips for tying really small flies. So that's what we're gonna work on today. Stick around. Hey everybody, welcome to Savage Flies. I'm Matt, thanks for stopping by. Now I know I don't tie a lot of really small flies on this channel, talking about down to 18s and 20s, but I do tie plenty of them and I certainly fish a lot of them. It's just easier to go through the steps and show everybody when I'm making a video to do it on a 12 or 14. But I do have some tips that I've learned over the years that help me tie down to a 20 or even smaller. So the first one is you really got to pay attention to what thread you're using. My go-to thread is a 70 denier, and I will use that. It works fine down to about an 18, but 20s and below, I really need to, to step my thread down a little bit. And the 70 denier equates roughly to about an 8 aught. Um, maybe a 12 aught and a 14 aught. Those are common thread sizes as well. They're getting down there to the 30, 35 denier. So going down this small, you probably want to consider using one of these really fine threads. And the next tip is, you know, pay attention to the material you're using. If you don't have good dry fly hackle, it's going to be really hard to tie an elk hair caddis in a size 20. And of the material you do have, be fairly selective in the actual feathers you're picking out of it. Another tip is don't be afraid to leave something out. If I'm tying a parachute Adams in a 12 or 14, yeah, I'm going to use the, the muskrat dubbed body. But if I'm tying this in a 20 or 22, I might skip that step. I might leave the dubbing on the body out. If it's going to add too much bulk and just throw your fly out of proportion, feel free to skip it. There's no nothing wrong with doing that. In the end, as long as you have what generally looks like the, the insect you're trying to imitate, you're going to be fine. And the last tip, this is one, I can't remember where I read it, but it was years ago and it's really helped me a lot, is start big. Start bigger. At the beginning of every season, I'm going to tie five dozen elk hair caddises. And I'll start with a 12. I'll do 12s, 14s, 16s, 18s, and 20s. So if I'm going to do a dozen in each of those sizes, I'll start on the big end. I'll start with the 12s. And what that does, it really helps you to keep your proportions right. If you tie a dozen 12s, then you move on to the 14s, you, all you have to do is just adjust it a little bit down. Maybe take a little bit smaller clump of elk hair, maybe grab a little bit smaller of a feather for the, the palmer tackle. Then when you go to the 16s and 18s, you're gradually stepping it down as you go, and you should be able to adjust your proportions accordingly as you step it down. And one other reason I think this helps is that by the time you're getting to your 18s or 20s, you've just tied 48 flies, so you're pretty well practiced and you're probably in the groove. So I guess that's really it for any tips I can offer on tying really small flies. And the biggest one I think is it's just practice. Start big and practice as you get smaller and you're going to be fine. Oh, one last thing. Don't worry if your size 20s don't look as good as your 12s. You're about to see me tie this elk hair caddis in a size 20, and it's not going to look as good as if I was tying it on a 12. But that's okay. I'm fine with that. It still looks okay, and it still catches fish. And I think you're going to like the pattern. Let's give it a shot. There it is in the vise. Uh, elk hair caddis, pretty standard, typical looking one, although it's on a size 20. Now, one thing I will keep in mind is I don't necessarily put those wings have them just on top. Let's take a look at it from a fish's view right there underneath. You see how the wing is splayed out on both sides. So the profile the fish is going to see is a little bit of a head and then the wings on both sides. So let's see if we can get a size 20 put in here straight enough. Okay, there we go. A little bit of perspective. There's a dime. This is a, a small hook. And I'm going to use a brown thread. This is a camel thread because uh, I think it, it will just uh, keep the fly from getting too dark on us. And I've stepped it down to an, an 14 aught. So my standard thread is a 70 denier, which is about an 8 aught. So a 14 aught is probably somewhere around 30, 35 denier. So my thread is about half the thickness of what I normally use. So the first thing we're going to catch in 
is the hackle that we're gonna palmer up. This, I'm gonna use a ginger here. This looks tiny, like there's, you don't think there's gonna be too much on it, but just hold it right there. That's how much hackle we're gonna have. So we're gonna have plenty. And not a whole lot you can do to prep it, prep this hackle. So just a couple wraps right here, taking it back. And I'm going to go ahead and start doing a few wraps up, but I will go ahead and snip this before I get too far up or you'll end up with a, a bunch of fibers sticking forward of your eye. And we don't really want that. So let's go ahead and bind these down. These are loose wraps right here. And I'm gonna take my thread back and put some wax on it. I am going to dub a little body on this. For the, the small flies, you can often skip this part. Or is it, are you really gonna be able to see the dubbing? Well, I don't know. And for a standard bigger elk hair caddis, I definitely try to match the, the body with what color bugs are in my waters. And here in Maryland on the gunpowder, a lot of our caddis are a gray. They're a light color and they're a gray color. But whatever they are in your water, if they're an olive, maybe they're a darker brown, uh, it doesn't hurt to try and match this body, dub your body with whatever color your bugs are. Now, are the fish going to be able to see this? I don't really know. But if you're going to put a, a dub of body on, you might as well make it the, the color of the bugs. Okay, so we've got our body, we've got the hackle caught in, and just palmer it up. Let's get a full wrap right here. And just kind of evenly spaced wraps going up. How bushy you want it is totally up to you. Uh, but the closer you put these wraps together, the higher this thing is going to float. Okay, I think we're going to be fine right there. Let's try to catch this off with a, a couple of wraps right here. Okay, let's go three. And there's our body. Not the, the neatest thing in the world, but you know these small hooks are kind of hard to work with. So just as long as you can still get your tip it up through the eye, that's your goal there. If you have a few of these fibers sticking out over it, I wouldn't worry too much about that. So we're gonna have a big elk hair head in just a second anyway. So you have to judge how much elk hair you're going to take. And if you err to any side, I would err to having too little. So I'm going to take a chunk about that big right there. Go ahead and put it in my stacker. Give it a good stack. And you can check to see if your butt ends are all uh, uneven. Then it's probably stacked pretty well on you. So let's take a look and see. Okay, I think that's going to be fine right there. And a couple of them came out long, so I'm just going to try to pull those out. All right. And here, let's get this tied in. It's easy to accidentally go too long with these guys. Tied it in right there, that would be, I think, a little bit long, so I'm gonna to try to go a little shorter than that. You just grab it with your material hand. I'm gonna back this thread up just a little bit. That's where I want my head to be caught in. And one trick here, kind of pinch your hook while you're still pinching your elk hair and a loose wrap. Two kind of loose wraps and now pull it a little bit tighter. And before we go, okay, I think that wing, that's probably a little bit longer than I want, but we can live with it. So. Check your underside. Yeah, we've got enough room to um, get our tippet through there. 
so I'm not putting too many wraps around right now because I'm not going to use head cement on these. I'll use head cement on an elk hair caddis if it's 12 or 14, but these little guys right here, I'm just going to take my super glue and then touch it to this, the thread about somewhere within that half inch that is, see that? I've got a couple of drops on it, somewhere that half inch closest to the hook. And this will give me about three or four wraps. It's going to put some super glue down. So I've got my super glue in right there. And can we still get our tippet through there? Yes, we can. But with this real thin thread, we've got the luxury of being able to use a few extra wraps. So I'm going to go ahead and put a few more wraps right there. Maybe one more on top. And now before we cut that head, you'll want to whip finish it. If you cut the head and then tried to whip finish, it would just kind of be easy to mess it all up. So carefully take your whip finish tool as you lift these front hairs up. See if you can get a four turn in there. And we did. Now let's snip this off as close as we can. Now let's fix our head. Let's give it a little military buzz cut. I kind of pull these and twist them to get them a little bit closer together. And you don't cut it too short. I mean, the, the head of this is a prominent part of the fly, so just in right like that. Maybe that's uh, about what we want. Don't have to go back and do any whip finishing, but I will definitely take my smallest bodkin and make sure I don't have any super glue up there in the eye. Nothing more frustrating than getting on the river and not being able to get your tippet through there. So let's take a look at this from the fish's view and see if that wing is splayed out on both sides okay. I think it is. We've got one little rogue fiber right there, but that's what the fish is going to see. They're going to see that head and then see the wing splayed off to the side. And you can tell what I'm talking about. You might not be able to see that gray. Is a fish going to think that this is a grayish bug? Yeah, probably not. But it doesn't hurt to go ahead and try to match your dubbing, your body color to the flies. So that's it. It's a pretty simple fly. It's only tough because it's so tiny. But other than that, um, yeah, elk air caddis, my go-to fly pattern year round. So that's it, everybody. I appreciate you watching. Y'all take care. We'll see you next time.